Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over two examples of how we use the kinematic equations for one-dimensional horizontal motion. And in this video, we're going to do two problems where we're going to solve for the acceleration. And this is the first example. Example number one says, we have a bicyclist who accelerates from rest to a speed of 7.15 meters per second over a distance of 37 meters. And we want to know what is the acceleration of that bicyclist. All right, now the first thing you should always do is write down what you're given and what you're trying to solve for, the knowns and the unknowns. Now, as I said in the previous video, there are five different variables in the kinematic equation, and you should write down all five of them. The initial velocity, the final velocity, the change in position, the acceleration, and the time. Write down all five. Fill in what you know and what you don't know. We know the bicycle accelerates from rest. That means the initial velocity is zero meters per second. The final velocity, 7.15 and the distance over which that occurs is 37 meters. That is the change in position. Now we are trying to solve for the acceleration, so I'm going to put a question mark there, and we're not given the time, and we're not going to try and solve for the time, therefore we're not going to use the time in this problem. Now you can see we are given three variables, and we're trying to solve for the fourth. Get out your kinematic equations. You should remember in each kinematic equation there are four variables. If you're given three and you can solve for the fourth. So we need to find the equation that has the acceleration in it and also has these other three variables. I'm going to go through each one one at a time. The first equation doesn't have the acceleration in it. We know therefore we cannot use that equation. The second equation has the acceleration in it. Therefore we can use this equation if we know the other three variables. Do we know the other three? Do we know the final velocity? Yes. Do we know the initial velocity? Yes. Do we know the time? No, we do not know the time. Therefore, we cannot use that equation. The next equation, we're looking for the acceleration, so we have that. Do we know the other three variables? The change in position? Yes. The initial velocity? Yes. But once again, we don't know the time, so we cannot use that equation. The last equation, we're trying to solve for the acceleration. It has the acceleration in it. We know the final velocity, we know the initial velocity, we know the change in position. This is our equation. Let's take our information and the equation to the next page. Now we can plug the values in and simply solve for the acceleration. Now, you should notice also, we can simplify this a little bit. Here we have the initial velocity squared. Well, the initial velocity squared, well, the initial velocity is zero and therefore the initial velocity squared is also going to be zero. So we can make this term zero, this term goes to zero. Now we have the final velocity is equal to two times the acceleration times the change in position. I'm going to rearrange this equation to solve for the acceleration. That means the acceleration equals the final velocity squared divided by two times the change in position. Plug the values in. The final velocity squared is 7.15 squared divided by two times 37. And you get that the acceleration of that bicyclist is 0 0.69 meters per second squared. Okay, that is example number one. Our second example solving for acceleration, a car is traveling with a velocity of 32.7 meters per second. It accelerates uniformly to a velocity of 16.5. Now you'll notice it's slowing down. Slowing down change in velocity is still called acceleration, so it does say acceleration here, but you should notice that it's slowing down. Okay, and that occurs over a time of 2.85 seconds, and we would like to know what is the acceleration. Once again, you should, the first step to solving these problems is to write down all five of the kinematic equations. Just write them all down, get in the habit. Initial velocity, final velocity, change in position, acceleration time. Write down what you know. We know the car is traveling with a velocity of 32.7 meters per second. That's our initial velocity. 16.5 is our final velocity the time or which that occurs, 2.85 seconds, and we're trying to find the acceleration, and we're not going to, and we're not given the change in position. Now, once again, you'll notice we have three variables. We're solving for a fourth. Get out your kinematic equations. Let's see which equation are we going to use. The first equation doesn't have acceleration in it. We're not going to use that one. This one has acceleration in it. Let's just see. Here, here's our acceleration. Do we know the other three variables? The final velocity, yes. The initial velocity, yes. The time, yes. So therefore, we can use these two equations. Okay. Now, just quickly, you'll notice that these two equations have the change in position. We don't know the change in position. Therefore, we could not, and we could not use those either of those two equations. On the next slide, let's bring our information and our equation with us. 
This is the information that we're given, these three variables. We're solving for the fourth. This is what we're solving for. We know the other three variables. I like to rearrange this equation, first of all, and solve for the acceleration before I plug the values in. That means the acceleration is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity, subtract the initial velocity from each side of the equation, divide by the time, and that's our standard equation, our standard definition of acceleration, change in velocity over time, plug the values in, you get 16.5 minus 32.7 divided by 2.85 seconds, and you get the acceleration of that car is minus 5.68 meters per second. The minus sign tells us that it's slowing down. We can assume, we kind of make the assumption that the motion of the object is in the positive direction. Positive velocity, negative acceleration means the object is slowing down or its speed is decreasing. Okay, so there you go. Those are two examples for using the kinematic equations to solve problems for acceleration. You'll notice I did the same steps for both. I wrote down all five variables. I filled in what we knew, what we didn't know. We were given three. We want to solve for the fourth. I chose the right equation. I rearranged it for the variable we're solving for, plugged the values in, get the correct answer with the correct units. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. I'll place some links here at the end of this video to some additional kinematic problems that you can use for some further practice. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, you can please do all of the following three things. Give me a thumbs up, leave a nice positive comment in the comment section below, and also subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent, helpful physics, chemistry, and math videos. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you in the next video.